So down here in the understory, we have this creeping trailing shrub that goes across the trail. And in fact, when you're walking along, it sometimes might feel like these are trying to almost reach out and grab you and trip you. So with this creeping and trailing shrub, we're gonna to try to key this out. And some of you might already have an idea as to what this is, especially because I will say that it is armed. So turn to your broadleafed trees and shrubs in your dichotomous key. And our first choice is most leaves reduced to sharp spines, few leaves have normal blades, or most leaves not reduced to spines, most leaves have normal wide blades. Well, these are most definitely not reduced to spines. So these are normal wide blades, and that takes us to choice number two. So for choice two, we have either leaves are simple or leaves are compound. So remember the difference between the simple versus compound leaf. First, we have to know where our main stem is. So here's our main stem. We can even see the little buds at the base of this petiole here. If this is our main stem and that's all one leaf, would that be simple or compound? If you guess compound, you're correct. So this is indeed a compound leaf comprised of a bunch of little leaflets. So that's one leaf, this would be another leaf, that would be another leaf. So that takes us to number 66. And for number 66, our choices are leaves and buds opposite or leaves and buds alternate. So when we look at the leaves and buds, are they opposite or alternate? So if that's one leaf, this is another leaf, this is another leaf, are they opposite each other or are they alternating up the stem? So these look like they're alternating. And so for alternate, we're gonna to go to number 68. And our choices there are twigs and stems armed or twigs and stems not armed. So these are definitely armed. And that gives us number, takes us to number 69. Our choices are twigs armed only at nodes with paired stipular spines youngest twigs angular and buds submerged, seven to 19 leaflets, or entire twig stem armed with prickles and three to nine leaflets. So we've got two, four, five leaflets here, three leaflets there, three leaflets, three leaflets. So we're definitely within those three to nine leaflets. And again, our entire twig and stem are armed with prickles. So that takes us down to number 70. So for number 70, our choices are pinnately compound, usually five to nine leaflets, leaflets small, round oval, rachis armed or unarmed, paired stipules, and the fruit is a red orange hip, or palmately compound or trifoliate, three to five leaflets, leaflets large, mostly one and a half to four inches, and the rachis and petiole are usually armed no stipules, and the fruit is an aggregate of druplets. And any of you who have hiked in the Pacific Northwest are probably pretty familiar with the aggregate of druplets that usually is found on these plants. And these are indeed palmately compound or trifoliate, and they are armed even on the rachis. So that takes us to the rubus. So our next part is we're gonna to try to figure out what kind of a rubus this is. And again, remember, it's creeping and trailing. And we can see from here that we have these leaflets, anywhere from three to five leaflets on here. So our key to the Pacific Northwest rubus species starts with a choice of leaves, compound and alternate, maybe evergreen or deciduous, and the stems are armed, or the leaves are simple, alternate and deciduous, palmately lobed and vein, and stems unarmed. And every time I grab this, it's most definitely armed. So the leaves are compound, they're alternate, they're evergreen, and the, the stems are armed. So that takes us to choice number two. Choice number two, stems ribbed or stems round in cross-section. So if I was to try to carefully roll this between my fingers, it rolls pretty easily. Therefore, it's round in cross-section. So you don't have to cut through it to see if it's round. If it rolls really easily, then it's round in cross-section. 
So it's rounded in cross-section, that takes us to number four. And for number four, our choices are the bark is tan and exfoliating, the prickles exfoliate with the bark and break off easily, and the leaves are deciduous. So these leaves look more evergreen than deciduous, and it does not have the exfoliating bark. So our other choice is bark does not exfoliate, typically covered with white or purple gloom, leaves may be deciduous or persistent. So it looks like our leaves are evergreen. So our next choice is leaves evergreen, lower leaf surface is pale green, or leaves deciduous, lower leaf surface is white. So if we look at the underside of our leaf, we'd be looking for, is it really pale white or is it just more of a pale green? And that looks more pale green than white, and these look a little bit tough and leathery and probably evergreen. So that means that we're looking at our Rubus ursinus, not to be confused with the Rubus leucodermis. So Rubus leucodermis would have a really pale, almost powdery underside, and our Rubus ursinus, more of a pale green. So we are indeed looking at Rubus ursinus.